It's basically a rite of passage at this point for anyone getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh to pick up three structure decks, smush them together, and slowly upgrade their pile into something approaching a competitive build. That's not something I saw myself doing, but the rich lore, generous reprints, and yes, general hype around the Albash Strike structure deck totally sucked me in. So in this video, we're going to analyze the deck bosses, take a look at the core and staple cards included in the structure deck, and then try to build a budget-friendly list with the help of a few choice singles. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at the fearsome duo behind structure deck Albaz Strike. We'll start things off with the namesake of the structure deck. Fallen of Albaz is a level 4 Dark Dragon with fairly respectable stats. Being a Dark Dragon grants it plenty of support, and its connections to the Springins, Tri Brigade, Despia, Sword Soul, and Dogmatica archetypes open up a lot of ways you can play this card. But regardless of which deck you throw this in, the thing that Fallen of Albaz really wants to do more than anything else is Fuse. When you actually read the card, uh, it's pretty crazy. If this card is normal or special summoned, except during the damage step, you can discard one card, fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters on either field as fusion material, including this card, but you cannot use other monsters you control as fusion material. You can only use this effect of Fallen of Albaz once per turn. It's super polymerization on legs, which is something I'm sure you've heard at least a hundred times by now, uh, but honestly, that is the biggest selling point of Albaz. Now, as for the fusions that list Fallen of Albaz as material, they are pretty generous with what their second material requirements are. And since Fallen of Albaz is a dark dragon, that opens you up to cards that are actual super polymerization targets as well, including a number of the Predaplants, Borlode Furious Dragon, and Mud Dragon of the Swamp, among others. Albaz is definitely the linchpin of its deck and its archetype, but it's arguable that it's one that you don't want to summon too often. Albaz is, in most cases, probably better off lurking in the deck, waiting for you to play Branded Fusion, and call out your true boss monster. The structure deck might be called Albaz Strike, but the real heart and soul of this deck is Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon. This frosty and fearsome deck boss is a level 8 Dark Worm with 3000 attack and 2500 defense. It's also a fusion monster, requiring the Fallen of Albaz and one fusion, synchro, Xyz, or link monster as its materials. Mirror Jade is an extremely powerful and threatening deck boss. Don't believe me? Well, let's read the card. You can only control one Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon. Once per turn, quick effect, you can send one fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard that mentions Fallen of Albaz as material, banish one monster on the field. Also, this card cannot use this effect next turn. If this fusion summon card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls during the end phase of this turn. So, you get a quick effect banish at the cost of dumping an extra deck monster, and if your opponent manages to out your Mirror Jade, it casually blows up all their monsters in the end phase. Combine that with a stat line that Blue Eyes White Dragon would approve of, and you can see why they literally printed a Highlander clause on this card. Now, there are a few issues with Mirror Jade, and they all effectively come down to resource management. Mirror Jade, simply put, takes a lot to hit the field. If you can steal an enemy extra deck monster with Fallen of Albaz, then you're golden. Using Branded Fusion, on the other hand, requires an extra step of fusing into another Albaz dragon first, and then paying their cost to fuse into Mirror Jade. You're just adding an extra step, and again, uh, extra materials or conditions that you might need to meet, both of which can potentially add up in the long run. But thankfully, there are plenty of tools available for recurring resources, particularly those which will get Albaz back from the graveyard or the banished zone, so Mirror Jade's flaws can be fairly easily mitigated. 
And one final thing to note is that Mirror Jade's Raigeki effect won't actually trigger if it's destroyed after being revived. It only happens, uh, you know, when it leaves the field after being properly fusion summoned. So if you use Monster Reborn, for example, to bring back Mirror Jade and it gets destroyed again, you will not blow up the enemy board at the end of the turn. And now that we've got a pretty decent understanding of how Albaz and Mirror Jade work, let's take a look at how I tried to build on the structure deck to really make them shine. I want to take a moment and look at what the structure deck cards themselves offer in terms of utility and directions in which we can build the deck. And I'm going to focus more on the immediately useful ones, since there is just a lot of fluff or things that don't really play to what Albaz and Mirror Jade are trying to do. Starting off with our core cards, you won't be surprised to see Fallen of Albaz, Branded Fusion, Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon, Lubellion the Searing Dragon, and Albion the Branded Dragon. These are the heart and soul of the deck. Your goal is to either resolve the effect of Fallen of Albaz or the effect of Branded Fusion. Both routes get you to Mirror Jade, and in either case, you will need all of these cards in decent counts to reach Mirror Jade consistently and then fuel its Banish effect. Moving on, we do get a decent amount of archetypal support in the structure deck, which consists of Springen's Kit, Tri Brigade Mercurier, Albion the Shrouded Dragon, Branded Lost, Branded in White, Branded Sword, Branded Retribution, Brigrand the Glory Dragon, Titaniclad the Ash Dragon, and Sprind the Iron Dash Dragon. Springen's Kit, Tri Brigade Mercurier, and Albion the Shrouded Dragon all provide a measure of search, recursion, or general consistency. Kit acts as a searcher for your branded spells and traps, and notably she can recover branded spells and traps from either the banished zone or directly from the deck, uh, which is extremely useful. Mercurier is an archetypal hand trap with a bonus search effect when banished to add Albaz or a monster that mentions it to your hand. And Albion acts effectively as an extra copy of Albaz while on the field or in the graveyard, and it can either special summon itself to provide you with a big beater, or mulligan a card for you at the cost of sending the real Albaz or a branded spell or trap to the graveyard. Kit, Mercurier, and Albion all have their uses. The former two will definitely appear in higher counts early on due to their more general utility, while Albion is probably a one of in most cases. Branded Lost provides a measure of protection for your fusion summons, basically acting like the invoked engine's magical meltdown. This won't stop Ash Blossom from ruining our main play, but it's valuable enough to include at least one copy of it, uh, and it does net you a search if you successfully fusion summon, which is something to keep in mind. Branded in White is our backup if Branded Fusion gets stopped. It's useful, but not something that you're going to run in high counts or really play at all once you start upgrading the deck. The two traps, Branded Retribution and Branded Sword, provide interesting ways to interact with the opponent. Retribution lets us blank a special summon by shuffling back Albaz fusions into our deck, and Sword gives us the potential to flood the board with beefy tokens. Both these cards require a bit of setup, so we'll want to keep them at, generally speaking, one copy each. And then we have the other Albaz fusions, all of which provide some situational benefits. Brigrand is unkillable in battle and offers limited targeting protection for your other monsters. Titaniclad has limited invulnerability to extra deck monster effects on the turn that it is summoned, and Sprind lets us shift it to another column and then blow up everything in that column, uh, which is pretty nifty. Each of these fusions also provide additional utility in the end phase of the turn that they go to the graveyard allowing us to search or special summon Fallen of Albaz or a monster from their associated archetype. So Brigrand gives you access to Tri-Brigades, Titaniclad grabs Dogmaticas, and Sprind can call on Springens. And finally, we have some staple cards which come in the structure deck, including Keeper of Dragon Magic, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Effect Veiler, Called by the Grave, Dark Ruler No More, Gold Sarcophagus, Pot of Extravagance, 
warning point, back to the front, there can be only one, and dimensional barrier. Now, I'd hesitate to call Keeper of Dragon Magic a true staple, however, it is a searcher for branded fusion on summon, so we're gonna have to play this until we get a better engine in place. Ghost Ogre, Effect Veiler, Called by the Grave, Warning Point, and Dark Ruler No More are all fantastic inclusions, giving this deck the ability to interact with the opponent on either player's turn, generally speaking by turning off monsters' effects, stopping them from attacking, or just destroying them outright when they attempt to resolve their effects. These cards take the structure deck, uh, especially just structure deck builds themselves, from interesting to fairly viable, and we are probably going to keep most of these at varying ratios throughout our time playing the deck and its various upgraded forms. Gold Sarcophagus is an interesting inclusion, providing a delayed search effect that actually has more utility in triggering on banish effects. In this particular case, it basically combos with Tribrigade Mercurier to cheat out your combo pieces, but it also does have some synergy with a number of the Despia cards if that's a build that you want to pursue down the road. Pot of Extravagance is a really nice reprint, and it does provide some much needed draw power in earlier builds of the deck, read those that are composed of nothing more than three structure decks. That said, we do run the risk of banishing all of our Mirror Jades, uh, especially if you go for the full draw to effect, and you know, banishing all of your Mirror Jades is basically an auto loss, so I think this card is a risky inclusion uh, in anything aside from the you know, three of structure deck builds. Uh, and even then, I wouldn't say that this is necessary. Back to the front is basically a monster reborn uh, in the form of a trap card. It's cute in that it's part of a little scythe lock package that comes with the structure deck, but I think it's more useful for bringing back Albaz to fuse away an enemy monster on the opponent's turn. Uh, but honestly, there are much better ways to accomplish this down the road. So this is a nice one to have early on, but not something that you're gonna keep long term. And then we have a couple of Floodgates in There Can Be Only One and Dimensional Barrier. These cards are surprisingly good meta calls for the time that the structure deck came out, uh, and I think it's reasonable to say that they will almost always remain useful to some degree down the road. There Can Be Only One in particular uh, is just a blowout card and will win you some games pretty much as soon as you flip it up. So now that we've got a good idea of what our building blocks actually are, Let's see if we can throw these together with a few choice singles and actually come out with a somewhat viable deck. 99% of the upgraded Albash Strike builds you'll see on YouTube or elsewhere are going to be branded Despia builds. And that does make sense. There is a ton of synergy between the Albaz and branded cards and the Despia. And, you know, branded Despia is arguably the best deck in the format. But as a filthy casual, uh, I am not keen on paying the overinflated costs for the cards needed to build Branded Despia, and honestly, with the lore being a big reason for my interest in the deck, it doesn't make sense to have Albaz play second fiddle to a bunch of demonic thespians when he is supposed to be the hero of the story. So instead, I built the deck around Albaz himself, looking to fuse away the opponent's cards at every opportunity. I also tried to build in some follow-up plays, just in case our main fusion plays get stopped, or if the board looks a little lacking after we've managed to establish our big fusion baddies. If you are curious about how much the upgraded build actually costs, prices for everything will come up as we discuss the cards, and if you do want to look at anything in a little bit more detail, there is a link to the decklist in the description and the pinned comment below. Now then, uh, most of what you'll see here is a fairly faithful structure deck build. We're running our core pieces and staples in high counts, notably Fallen of Albaz at three copies, and then really we've just made a few additional inclusions that we're actually going to need to discuss here. First up is the tiny Dogmatica package I added in. The Dogmatica engine seems like a bad idea at first, since it does lock you out of the extra deck, but that lockout happens after you use these cards, so you can still make your main fusion plays earlier in the turn. I also desperately needed light targets to fuse into Albion the Branded Dragon, so that was an additional consideration as well. Nadir Servant is our search spell for the Dogmatica package. It lets you send an extra deck monster to the graveyard to grab either a Dogmatica monster or Fallen of Albaz, but it locks you out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. You probably don't want to search for Albaz with this card, 
because you can't then use Albaz to fuse stuff away. So instead, you're generally gonna grab Dogmatica Ecclesia, who is the face of this deck's follow-up. And yes, we will get to the whole send from your extra deck thing in a little bit, so put a pin in that. Speaking of Ecclesia, Ecclesia is a Dogmatica search card herself. She can special summon herself from the hand if there's an extra deck monster on the field, and then she can trigger her effect to basically fetch you an additional Dogmatica card. She's also immune to destruction by battle with extra deck monsters, which can come up, potentially buying you a turn in some niche situations. But mostly, you're going to use her to search for either Fleur de Lis or Dogmatica Punishment for that, well, follow-up. Fleur de Lis is a free special summon if Ecclesia is already on the board, and she can negate a monster effect as long as another Dogmatica monster is there when she's special summoned from the hand. She is also a big beat stick, which gets stronger with every attack, which again can come up because she can let you potentially run over some of your opponent's big uh, extra deck baddies. Dogmatic Punishment is basically this deck's panic button. This sends an extra deck monster to the graveyard to destroy an enemy monster with less uh, attack than what you sent, but unlike Ecclesia and Nadir, this one locks you out of the extra deck until the end of your next turn. So I cannot stress enough that this is a last resort kind of card, but it is one that can be really devastating to the opponent if timed correctly, especially with one of the cards that you can potentially send. Now the Dogmatica engine is nothing without powerful monsters to send from the extra deck, because there are actually a number of extra deck monsters that can generate advantage when they are sent to the graveyard. First up we have Elder Entity Intus, and by extension uh, Fossil Warrior Skull Knight, both of which provide a bit of spot removal, while Psyframe Lord Omega is there to provide recursion or a bit of graveyard disruption. The second big addition to the deck, and arguably the most important one, was Super Polymerization. Albaz can already fuse away the opponent's monsters, but this card gives us that snatch and fuse power on a quick play spell, which means we can use it potentially during our opponent's turn. Uh, and funny enough, you cannot respond to the activation of this card, which is really cool. If Albaz gets negated, this can actually give him a second lease on life, but it also works well with the plethora of dark monsters that we have in the deck, granting us access to some interesting extra deck monsters outside of the Albaz dragons. Currently, the deck runs two true super polymerization targets, the first being Predaplant Dragostopelia, which is a walking quick effect negate and general anti-synchro monster. It takes a dark monster and a fusion monster, so Keeper of Dragon Magic, and even Springen's Kit can be used to out enemy fusions. Our second super polymerization target is Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, which requires two dark monsters on the field except for tokens, which is pretty generous as far as materials go. It can copy effects and boost its attack, which is pretty crazy, and it does actually board wipe on destruction like Mirror Jade does, though it's a bit more specific in that it happens at the time of destruction and it only clears special summon monsters from the board. The Iris Sword Soul was a super late addition to the deck, but one that I think offers a ton of value. If a monster with negated effects is on the field, she can special summon herself from hand on a quick effect, and then if the opponent special summons a monster, she can trigger one of three effects depending on where that monster is special summoned from. So she could potentially grant us a free special summon, a draw to, or a pop on an extra deck monster. The special summon is particularly cool in this deck because you can use it to cheat out Fallen of Albas from the hand and then immediately fuse away an enemy monster on the opponent's turn. Branded in red was the only Despia-ish card I picked up, but it's one that really raises the ceiling of the deck and I managed to get a really good deal on it before it basically doubled in price. So what it does is recur an Albaz from the graveyard to your hand, and then it lets you fuse into a level 8 or higher monster by banishing Albaz and the other associated materials. This grants us access to nearly all of our Albaz dragons, but it can actually be used to make Dragostopelia and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon in certain game states as well, uh, which will actually come up and is pretty fantastic. The only other addition to the structure deck that I made here is Allure of Darkness, Basically, this is a better draw to than Pot of Extravagance could be, because you're going to banish a dark monster from hand instead of banishing your very valuable pieces from the extra deck. 
And as a structure deck build, you know, we are running monsters in higher counts, so we are going to have plenty of fodder for this card as well. Uh, and you know, if we happen to banish Tri Brigade Mercurier for the effect of Allure of Darkness, then we do get a search for Albaz or a monster that references it. So the cost can actually end up being a plus in some circumstances. As for the side deck, it's not too fleshed out uh, at the moment. I didn't really have room for Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit in the main deck since I was trying to stick to 40 cards. So it's relegated here for the time being until, you know, there's a matchup where it might prove more useful than Effect Veiler, for example. Uh, and it is a light target as well, which is something to keep in mind. The two Kaijus are actually pretty useful because you contribute off problem monsters on the enemy board and then immediately fuse them away using either Albaz or Super Poly. Uh, which is really great. Generally speaking, this deck wants to go second, and these cards are fantastic at facilitating that kind of play. Forbidden Chalice was a nice addition for pretty cheap, offering spot negation on a quick play spell, which makes it more useful than Warning Point, and it can even be more useful than Dark Ruler No More in certain situations. And finally, I wanted to side in a bit of back row hate, and Heavy Storm Duster did the trick offering a double pop with a fairly negligible cost since you're usually activating this on the opponent's turn. Overall, uh, I do think this build can give you a fighting chance, especially against enemy branded and branded Despia decks, since you can pretty consistently fuse away their dark and light monsters. The Predaplant package is also very useful for outing Guardian Chimera, which makes me very happy because we cannot afford to play that card ourselves. But on the flip side, I can see this deck struggling if you run up against something that doesn't play too many lights or darks, but as long as your opponent has some extra deck monsters, you still have a route to Mirror Jade and thus a fighting chance. And you know, the Kaijus are always there as well, uh, so that you can make the Super Poly and Fusion targets uh, that you need on the opponent's board. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I wanted to let you guys know that there will actually be an accompanying exhibition match featuring the upgraded structure deck. Keep an eye out for that in about the next week, and with a little luck, Albaz will put in a solid performance. Also, if you guys would like to explore some other upgrade routes for the deck, let me know in the comments below. I'm somebody who personally loves to tinker, and figuring out how to incorporate all the different engines alongside the Albaz core has actually been a blast. I already have a few ideas, so if you do want to see this deck evolve even further, I am more than happy to oblige. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video, especially if you're one of my regular viewers, i.e. players of the Pokemon trading card game. It never hurts to try something new, or old, I guess. Uh, and you know, there are valuable concepts and lessons that you can glean from other card games, and I've actually already found that to be the case here with Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, but either way, you know, I hope you liked it. I will catch you all in the next one, and until then, take it easy.